Behind this ordinary action, which we accept with the nonchalance of a modern-day Aladdin, there is an army of skilled workers and technicians, the men and women who supply us with electricity. There are vast electrical power plants, such as the one we're viewing now, located in Pittsburgh, California, and owned and operated by the Pacific Gas and Electric Company. It is from the installation sources such as this that electrical power originates, massive generators touching the daily lives of all of us produces electricities in quantities to stagger the imagination of such men as Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Edison. If they could see today how very far their early pioneer efforts have been extended. One of the highest ranking names associated with the history of electricity is that of George Westinghouse, the prolific inventor who pioneered the alternating current type of electricity used throughout the United States today. He reasoned that a device could be developed to raise or lower voltage to step up the voltage from a generator in order to send it over great distances by lines supported by the familiar towers and to step down that same voltage at its destination, the homes, the factories, stores and offices of the American people who use it. His original rough sketch for this device is the same design basic to transformers today as we see it represented here. And it becomes our introduction to the success story subject for tonight the Westinghouse Electric Corporation Sunnyvale Manufacturing Division. Possibly the most important single piece of electrical equipment in the process of getting electricity from the source where it's generated to your home where it's used is the transformer. Tonight we're going to see if we can find some of the reasons why as we watch transformers such as this and other types of transformers manufactured here at the Westinghouse plant in Sunnyvale. With me is Mr. Leonard Goodell, the manager of electrical products. Mr. Goodell, I'm going to pose that basic question to you first. Just uh, what is a transformer? What does it do? Well, a transformer primarily is a means of transforming voltages up and down as the name designates. Primarily and basically, there are two kinds of transformers, power transformer and distribution transformer, Bob. <clears throat> the power transformer is the one that's used in the big power stations, and it transmits voltages to a very high voltage over the transmission lines to the steel towers we're all familiar with in our backyards. We then transform that voltage down to a lower voltage into these distribution transformers and in turn into your homes. Well, these kind of, at least from the outside, are familiar to all of us. I think it's the type we always see up on the pole. I'm curious, though, just uh, what part do they play in, in my life or the life of any individual? Well, Bob, uh, well, Bob, let's answer that as we go along, and I think we can give you that answer. All right, we'll take that on faith for the time being, Mr. Goodell. Right now, though, however, we'd like a little bit of an explanation of the very involved insides of this particular transformer here. Well, Bob, uh, this here transformer is a cutaway sample. Normally, this transformer is filled with oil in this inside. Here we have all the coils we're going to see being made tonight, the cores, we call it, or the magnetic circuit, all the leads up through to these bushings, which are the high-voltage leads connecting to the outside lines, our lightning arrestor, which protects the transformer, and the wires coming out to the low-voltage, which goes into your home. Well, now that you've given us at least an idea of what it is we're going to see manufactured, let's get to the first step in the making of one of these distribution transformers. What do you do first? Well, in distribution transformer, Bob, the first thing we should be doing is making a low-voltage coil. And uh, here we see one of our operators winding a low-voltage coil with a fairly heavy conductor for its size. Well, that's uh, a covered wire, an insulated wire, is it? Yes, this wire, Bob, is covered with a special paper for that particular rating of transformer. How does he know how many turns to put on, or isn't that important? Oh, that is very important, Bob. Uh, the design engineers determine the number of turns. It is determined by a mechanical counter on the machine, and if even a half a turn was left off, you wouldn't get the right voltages in your home. This appears to be a very slow and painstaking job here. Yes, it is, Bob. Uh, it's very precise. Uh, the, it has to be compact and tight, and the layers laid on there very evenly. I notice that occasionally he ties them together, too. Well, that's very important, Bob, so that when they, it comes off of the mandrels, these coils will be compact and solid. And as you see them here, they're putting an outer protective covering on it so that when it comes off, it'll be protected during its operations. I'm a little bit curious about the machines, Mr. Goodell. They're not like anything else we've ever seen. Are they made to your own specifications for this purpose? Yes, we have to make machines for this purpose because it isn't like a lathe, Bob, which you can buy in a regular machinery company. You have to make these for this purpose. And this is the coil from which the current will come that we use in our house? That is right. Let's see now, uh, in view of the fact that this is a long, involved process, let's see what a finished coil, a finished low-voltage coil looks like. Well, Bob, uh, here's a finished low-voltage coil. Uh, this is what we call the inner low-voltage coil. 
here that we call the outer low voltage coil, and later on we'll see what happens to the high voltage coils. Now you mentioned two different kinds of transformers. Are they all basically the same? Do they all have the same parts? Basically, either power or distribution transformers, Bob, have the same parts. The only thing difference is size, and the larger they are, the bigger the capacity of the transformer. Now you mentioned a high voltage coil, the one in the middle, in the serve, in the middle of the sandwich there. Uh, how are those made? By a similar process? Yes, Bob. Uh, they're made in a similar way on a different kind of machine, which is much faster, of course, because they're winding with much smaller wires, as you see here. Is the smaller wire a characteristic of the high voltage coil? In general, that's true, Bob. In this case here, this is quite a small distribution transformer because that wire that this girl is using is only about 25,000 in diameter. And as you see, she's putting on there nicely in layers. Yes, and I was going to mention that uh, that must take a good deal of skill. It does, because it's a hand feed operation, and we can't have any crossovers or spaces between those wires. It takes a while before you can do this right, then. Yes, it takes a long time. We have to train our own people, Bob. And we have a lot of people here, these girls in particular, that have been here for over 25 years. I notice that every once in a while they slip a layer of paper in under the wire. What's the purpose of that? Well, the purpose of that paper, Bob, is to protect each layer from each other, and at the same time it acts as a guide so they can put the wire on there in layers evenly, which is very important in this construction. Also, there's some little uh, squares and various shapes of... Uh, apparently corrugated or fiberboard that goes in there. What do those do? Well, Bob, there's two kinds. One is a spacer and one looks like a corrugated spacer, but they both act the same way. They're actually in the middle of those coils and they perform a space so that the oil can circulate through there to dissipate the heat in the operation of the transformer. Looks like there might be miles of wire on this one coil. Oh, yes, Bob. I probably is more than a mile or two miles of wire in that transformer right there. All right, now we've learned a little bit about the high voltage coil. Let's look again and see exactly what the part it plays in the completed coil itself. Well, Bob, uh, we said that we saw the low voltage coil being wound and the outer low voltage coil, and we just now saw the girls winding these high voltage coils. Here are some of the spaces we use to provide the duct formers and spaces for oil, and they all telescope right together as in a complete assembly, and it will finally look like this after we put together these parts. Now, you mentioned that uh, both kinds of transformers have uh, similar parts. Let's move over to the uh, eastern side of the building to show similar coils for the big power transformers. Is this a coil? Yes, Bob, that's a high voltage coil on a small power transformer. And yet the wire that this is being wound with looks as big as the wire that was on the low voltage coil on the distribution transformer. Yes, Bob, that is very true. And in some cases, that's even larger than the low voltage wire in the distribution transformer. And that's because of the large capacity that a power transformer has. Those are spacers he's putting in between there? Yes, Bob, those are the same as the corrugated spacer and distribution transformer primary to let the oil flow between the coils to keep it cool during its operations. The point that it's being wound on, is that an integral part of the coil itself? Yes, Bob, but that's a special micarta tube, and that remains there, and uh, that holds the coil in shape, and also to act as an insulator between the other coils. And this is an even more painstaking operation than the previous low-voltage coil we saw being wound. Yes, Bob, but while that looks like it's just a symmetrical winding, it's, very, it's a very complicated winding, and it takes a lot of skill to put them together. And we found still another facet in the matter of winding coils here at the Westinghouse plant in Sunnyvale. And this is neither slow nor ponderous. This happens very rapidly, as a matter of fact. Well, that's right, Bob. Uh, this is just another way we're winding high-voltage distribution transformer coils. Uh, here we're winding actually six at a time. You see them there. They got uh, six wires feeding onto it. And uh, actually, they're one way to wind them all at once. Each one of those shiny bands on that is a, is a separate coil then? Each one of those is a shiny band, just like as if one girl was holding each wire, all, only six going on at a time. I suppose they have to count the turns here very carefully, too. Well, they have to count them, but the machine does the counting for you. Oh, I see. Now, can this be done with the, the low-voltage coils, too? Yes, it could be, Bob, but it's not quite practical at this time. And here's a completed piece as it comes off the machine, I suppose, there on the left on the table? Yes, Bob, uh, that's the complete assembly after it's been removed from the mandrel. And after they remove the mandrel, of course, they're taken apart in sections, and you see them laying there. They're all individual coils, just as if they were wound one at a time. We're rapidly approaching the area, ladies and gentlemen, where all of these components